Hello, I'm Robert Simmons. I'm here to talk to you again about the alchemy of stones. And today I'm going to focus on what I think of as the four stones of power in our spiritual alchemy that we do with the mineral kingdom. And those four stones are Moldavite, Phenakite, in particular Azazeo Phenakite, Rosophia and Azestulite. So before I go on and get into the energies of each one of these stones and how they work together and how they enhance our practice in the alchemy of stones, I want to mention that I am offering a workshop uh, June 11th through the 14th, a four-day intensive in Burlington, Vermont, and it's entitled The Alchemy of Stones II. Um, this is uh, something I'm very excited about doing, and uh, I'm inviting everyone who sees this video who feels like they'd like to have hands-on, experiential um, time with stones in the in the paradigm of spiritual alchemy that I'm offering these days, um, come to that if you can. Uh, to find out more about it, uh, just go to heavenandearthjewelry.com. Heaven and Earth Jewelry, all spelled out in lowercase as one word, dot com. Uh, and there'll be plenty of information about uh, the workshop there. Um, so uh, let's get on with the stones here. Um, Moldavite, for example, is the first stone uh, that we work with in the alchemy of stones. Um, it may not be the first stone we work with chronologically, but it's one of these four stones of power that work in synergy with one another to really advance uh, our experience of the inner realms of the mineral kingdom and how that can affect our own subtle body and our consciousness. Uh, and Moldavite is kind of a revolutionary stone. It's the first stone that I ever actually felt. Uh, and it's a stone that I wrote uh, my first book about with my wife, Kathy Warner. Um, that was called Moldavite Starborn Stone of Transformation. And I, I imagine a number of you have seen that book. Um, so what Moldavite does on its own, in my view, is it accelerates spiritual evolution. Whatever is needed for you to draw in the elements of life that will move you forward, uh, and whatever you need to release or discharge in order to uh, get rid of any impediments to your evolution. Uh, Moldavite affects both of those things. It seems to magnetize the events and opportunities and energies that help us evolve. And it also seems to make it impossible for us to hang on to things that are not for our highest good. So Moldavite resonates very strongly with the heart chakra. Uh, and I like to use it there. Um, Many people who get the feeling of Moldavite's energy will uh, relate it to a sense of heat in the body. And it's not physical heat, but our energy body responds to it and communicates to our physical self, wow, this stuff is making me feel warm. And that warmth is, has to do with the sort of charging of our subtle body with a greater amount of energy. You know that Moldavite uh, is a meteoric gemstone. It fell in a meteor shower 15 million years ago in what's now the Czech Republic. And uh, it is something that carries still the energy of that huge event, which actually reversed the magnetic poles of the Earth. Um, so many people will have written me to say, uh, you know, Moldavite is the stone that woke me up. Uh, or Moldavite is the stone that set me on my spiritual path. And I found that to be true also. I didn't feel stone energies at all when I first encountered Moldavite back in the 1980s. And meditating with it 
eventually switched on my capacity to feel stones and to communicate with the stones as beings. And it also uh, was the first uh, incident of the activation of my light body. So all these things that I've been hearing about, stone energies, the light body, spiritual awakening, were triggered all at once during my, uh, that very important meditation with Moldavite. And so as it works together with the four stones of uh, power in the alchemy of stones, Moldavite is like the engine. It's like the thing that uh, charges up our own energies and makes us more able to access in, and connect with and interact with the beings of these other stones. And I should say, you know, that I do talk about stones as beings because I feel that all the uh, manifestation of existence that we call the world ar arises out of consciousness. So in other words, consciousness is the bedrock of our reality. Uh, and out of that arises all the forms, out of that arise all the forms and intelligences that we meet in the world. And for those of us who turn our attention there, that also includes the stone beings. So that's just a little bit of statement on that. Now, um, Moldavite uh, is a heart stone, uh, but it also can activate any and all of the chakras as it did with me. Um, there's another stone I'm going to speak about now. This is the stone I call Rosophia. And Rosophia, uh, the name of this stone, comes from the ancient Gnostic and alchemical name for wisdom and for the soul of the world, which is the name Sophia. So Sophia was viewed as a being, as a divine feminine being of power, wisdom, and constant creativity. And uh, Sophia was um, believed to be present in the wisdom and beauty of the world, and I believe that's true. Um, so I also sense uh, that this is a feminine energy, and um, Rosophia seems to carry the energy of Sophia more directly and clearly than any of the other stones I know. Uh, in a certain way, because Sophia is also the name that the Gnostics used and, and other uh, al alchemists used, for example, um, and uh, you know other spiritual traditions such as the Cathars and the Troubadours used to designate the soul of the world. Um, that means that all stones, the energies of all stones, in a sense, are emanations of the soul of the world. So why is Rosophia different? Well, as I said, I think it most clearly uh, offers out the, um, the currents that are the heart of Sophia, and that's the other half of its name. Rose is an ancient symbol for the heart. The rose is synonymous with the heart, metaphorically. And um, so the Rose of Sophia, the heart of the soul of the world, is what I named this stone. Uh, and I named it because I was the first person to notice uh, that this particular rock has these quite unusual and very uh, important energies. And this happened synchronistically when I was teaching at uh, a conference called the Sophia Conference in 2008. Just before that conference, I'd had a dream in which I met Sophia, and uh, in that dream, we exchanged our breath, which symbolically is like uh, exchanging your life essence or your energy with one another. And I will say that for myself and for anyone I know who has actually had an experience of Sophia, the immediate sense is that you love her and that you want to help her. And the old Gnostic uh, idea is that Sophia needs our help. The alchemists believed it too. Sophia's desire, if you would call it that, is to bring perfection, the perfection of the manifestation of consciousness in the world, into being. 
So in other words, the ascension of the earth, the ascension of humanity, the worldwide awakening that many of us have uh, intuited is possible, uh, is supported by the soul of the world. And as an alchemist, uh, one can enter into co-creative partnership with her to help bring this about. Now, along the way, as this occurs, many good things happen to us. We wake up to much more understanding of things. Uh, we, our capacities for communication with the stone beings and the soul dimension of all things in the world tends to open up uh, and get uh, more accessible to our everyday self. Um, so as we attempt to help Sophia bring worldwide enlightenment, which I know many of you long for and wish for and desire, um, as we do that, the co-creation always works like a feedback loop. So the more we give, the more we receive. Uh, and I should say that at the Sophia conference, I had just had this dream. So I was very much on the beam of thinking about Sophia and wishing for more connection with her. And it was so funny to me because when I arrived at the place where the the event was to take place, they had a room for my wife Kathy and I to stay in. And when we walked into that room, there was this stone sitting on the mantelpiece. And I immediately went over to it, you know, being who I am, and said, what's this? And I held it up to my heart and sort of opened myself to it and inhaled, inviting it in and exhaled, offering myself to the stone being. And these beautiful uh, curving currents of love and uh, I can just say feminine energy started circulating through my chest and around my heart and eventually um, went all through my body. Um, and that I immediately recognized was like the feeling of breathing in the breath of Sophia that I had experienced in my dream. So synchronistically, the just at the time that I was waking up to the reality of the soul of the world of Sophia, this stone appeared on the mantle of the room where I was staying when I was going to speak about stones at her conference. So that's a pretty good synchronicity if you ask me. Um, and I did then rush out into the, uh, the canyon, this was in New Mexico, and found with my wife Kathy, we went searching, thinking, well, somebody must have found this stone out in the landscape and put it in the room, maybe there's more. So we went searching and we found enough pieces so that the hundred or so people at the conference could each have one to work with. And I so, you know, incorporated this brand new stone into the talk I gave there and I invited everybody to try to feel it. And uh, the great majority of them did. Um, and in feeling it, they corroborated my sense that these are grounded currents that come up from the earth and reach up into our heart and bring this delightful sensation of love and harmony into us. So Rosophia is a natural partner for Moldavite in the alchemy of stones. The connection with the earth herself, as well as this connection with the cosmos and the acceleration of evolution are what these two stones bring to the party, you might say. So um, the third stone, and this is a stone that uh, I collect because I find them to be so important. Um, this stone is phenakite. And phenakite comes in all sorts of sizes, shapes, and colors. And this is a very large one, uh, the largest phenakite ever found in the world. Uh, the largest crystal was only about 40 pounds, which of course is quite a big crystal. Um, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, acquire that from the miner who brought it out of the ground. But I also, before that happened, I had this one, which my wife bought me for a Valentine's Day gift uh, quite a few years ago. And this is the very first piece 
of what I call Azazeo phenakite that's ever been discovered. And the first one I showed you, this one, is another piece of phenakite from the same mine, which I have called Azazeo phenakite because Azazeo is a word of uh, invocation of spiritual power from the highest realms of light. And I discovered this in an ancient Gnostic text. Um, you know, I could give you a much longer video that goes into all these details, but I'm trying to get these four stones all in here with a little bit about their essence. So, phenakite of all varieties stimulates the third eye very strongly. And it also moves its energy up into the crown chakra and activates that if you give it a little bit of time. Uh, and at that point, uh, it can open up the crown and uh, connect you consciously with the energies that exist in the soul star chakra up here and the etheric chakras that go up quite a bit higher uh, uh, in the invisible side of things. Um, but when your whole subtle body or energy body is activated, you not only feel your seven chakras in the physical body, you not only feel the earth star chakra that connects you to the earth and anchors you, you also feel these uh, so-called invisible chakras, the soul star and the etheric chakras above the head. Um, my own sense is that there's a total of about 14 of those that I've felt so far. Um, I wouldn't put any limit on it because I didn't think that there was anything above the top of my head until I felt something there. Um, so in any case, phenakite works up here in the upper chakras and connects us uh, and helps us become aware of the highest vibrations in our etheric chakras of our light body. So phenakite is a stone of visionary experience and it's a stone of light body activation and awakening. Um, it's a very rare material. It's closely related to emerald, and it's often found in emerald mines. Uh, and the phenakite that I'm showing you uh, was discovered in an emerald mine in Brazil. Um, so when we uh, have the Alchemy of Stones workshop in June of 2020, we'll be working with Azazeo phenakites and we'll provide a piece for every single person in the workshop to work with so they can experience these energies. That will also be true about all four of these power stones, Moldavite, Azestulite, Rosophia, and Phenakite. So I'll say a couple of words about the other ones, uh, the Azestulites now. Um, this is a piece of New Zealand Azestulite, which I call Sarolite Azestulite. And Azestulite, there are probably 14 or 15 varieties of it that have been found so far, maybe even more by now. Um, the beings that are the animators of the energies of this stone uh, are an angelic, an angelic group soul entity that calls itself Azez. And that and group soul uh, came to Naisha, my co-author of the Book of Stones, and uh, told her that they have recently come to earth because they are beings who facilitate the activation and the ascension of planets that are ready to make that kind of spiritual leap. And they judge that the earth is about ready for that. And I do too. Um, the crises that we are experiencing all around the world are the, I guess you'd call it the so-called negative side of the polarity that is uh, in tension, meaning in dynamic tension with the light uh, and high vibration spiritual energies that are also present now in, in a way that they perhaps have never been before. And the Azez are part of that. Um, they said uh, in the channelings that were done uh, with them that their mission is to um, go to planets that are ready to make this leap and station themselves on the power spots or the nodes of each planet that they do this with. And they've done it here. Uh, and they mentioned uh, places in the Adirondacks and in other mountains in North America, including Mount Shasta uh, and other places around the world where 
they themselves etherically are present to channel through the energy they serve, which they call Azez, and that word means the nameless light of the great central sun. So, Azestulite is the stone that they, these beings, activated to carry as a conduit this energy of the nameless light of the great central sun. And that is the transformative energy that will elevate and bring on planetary ascension. Now, an interesting thing that the Azez said when they were first communicating about this was that the activation of Azez Chalite had not yet been completed uh, and that they were just about to do so. Um, and they also said that at, when this activation occurred, it wouldn't just be in one moment. It would evolve and continue and spread because more and more stones in the Earth's crust would be able to take on and transmit and be a conduit for this energy of the nameless light of the great central sun. And the more people who worked with these stones, we were told, uh, the more rapidly the energy would spread to other stones and throughout the species and throughout the earth itself. So this is a really interesting picture of co-creation uh, that is very much in line with this idea of the goal of the soul of the world for the perfection of the planet and the ascension of all beings here. Uh, so this is big stuff and you know it's completely in alignment with the spiritual alchemy that was practiced for hundreds and thousands of years going back. Uh, the alchemist's word or phrase for their goal was the creation of the Philosopher's Stone. And the Philosopher's Stone uh, means the perfected physical thing that is so perfectly aligned with the divine, that the divine can manifest through it in the world. So, the Philosopher's Stone can be a physical object, such as a piece of Azestulite, or it can be the alchemist, him or herself, um, because, and it can be the earth itself, it can be any of these things, because what that name really refers to is the union of the physical and the spiritual, the union of the mundane world and the divine. And that's what spiritual alchemy has always aimed at, and that's the aim of the alchemy of stones that I'm writing about in my new book and am teaching at the workshop next June. Um, so these four stones together, Azestulite, Moldavite, Rosophia, and Phenakite, are the stones that are, you might say, the cornerstones, the four cornerstones, the stones of power that work together in a synergistic harmony to amplify one another's energies in, and in the presence of a person who's working with all four of them, uh, it has the same effect on us. Um, so this is something that we will do at the Alchemy of Stones Intensive in June of 2020. As a group, we'll all work together with these four stones and many more. But right now, as I concentrate on these cornerstones, I just want to speak of them. We'll work with these four stones to stimulate and activate our own body of light and in the most balanced way possible. This is where the role of Rosophia comes in. Rosophia is grounding as well as loving. It's heart energy, not head energy, not etheric energy. Um, and it can penetrate all the way down to your feet and connect you with the earth. Rosophia is like the divine feminine or the love of the earth reaching up to heaven. Azestulite, being the stone of the nameless light, is like the light of heaven reaching down to meet the earth's love. And when we use these together at our heart, we experience both of those things and the alchemical vessel of our own heart is the location in which these things happen. Um, so I know I'm just really uh, going fast and giving you a lot, uh, but what I really want to do is excite your interest in these four stones 
and possibly in coming to the workshop event. But uh, these four stones, if you're serious about your own uh, highest level of spiritual awakening and activation, and if you're interested in working co-creatively uh, with the earth for the manifestation of the earth's highest potential and all of the beings who are here sharing the earth, um, then these are the stones that I recommend the most highly and that I work with myself. So now I've mentioned uh, just now Rosophia and Azestulite and that, that joining dynamic between heavenly and earthly energies. Um, where does phenakite come in? Phenakite and Moldavite, actually, are both tremendously powerful energizers. Um, the Azazeo phenakites uh, that come from this certain place in Brazil that I mentioned actually uh, are the only stones I've ever found that are capable of stimulating and bringing to a higher level of activation other stones. So all of the Azestulites, for example, uh, are, um, are activated now. I use the Azazeo Phenakite, this great big uh, crystal uh, that I showed you earlier, the largest ones, uh, this and one other, to, um, I bring the, mold, the, the Azestulites into the presence of these Azazeo Phenakites and uh, we have a pyramid and a grid and a whole setup where we can really concentrate this energy and we super activate all of our azestulites now that i've learned that the azazel phenakite not only awakens and stimulates and activates me but it does the same for other stones as well and not every stone has shown uh itself to be um able to be activated in that way, but the ones that have include all of the azestulites, uh, Oralite 23, Lemurian light crystals, um, and probably a couple of others that I'm not remembering right now, but um, you know, if you work with the ones I've mentioned, you're going to have a pretty full plate in any case. Um, the Moldavite does much the same thing, but the concentration of Moldavite's energy is not as much uh, contagious to other stones. It seems mostly oriented towards activating the human being. So, and energizing and accelerating the evolutionary process, which is the same thing as the alchemical process. Basically, alchemy was a, um, it was many things, but in the alchemical process is not something that happens in a moment. It's something that takes uh, any, an indefinite amount of time to unfold and as it unfolds there are stages of unfolding that can be recognized and I'll talk about those in another video uh, but I would say that in a certain way uh, Moldavite is the fire in the alchemical vessel, the fire that heats the alchemical vessel of our own being and activates it so that the so that the transformations that need to happen in us in order for ourselves to become our full potential can happen. And then the stones that I've mentioned uh, in this video also are the stones that um, create the conditions and all the different qualities of the activation of our highest potential. So, you know, the Rosophia is that heart and earth connection. Um, the Azestulite is that connection to the great central sun and ascension. And the Phenakite, in a certain way, is a kind of a, it builds the bridge between the heart and the highest realms that Azestulite makes accessible to us by opening up our energy centers uh, here in the head and in the etheric body. So any of these stones uh, is well worth knowing and uh, developing a spiritual relationship with because they're all so incredibly powerful and all so beneficial. Um, all of them together really is, does create uh, an energy, an energetic mm, cocktail or something you might say, an energetic combination that stimulates rapid 
and profound transformations in us. Um, so what does that look like? What does it feel like to have your light body activated? Um, I can tell you it feels extremely good. Uh, I'm not trying to say that I live in light body activation every moment, but I've experienced it several times, uh, and I know that these stones are great facilitators of it. Um, and, uh, you know, beyond that, there are many healing applications. Um, phenakite, in particular, uh, seems to work spiritually uh, on that level for uh, the, uh, supporting the nervous system. Rosophia supports the heart and the circulatory system and the lungs and the emotional body. Uh, and azestulite uh, is said by the azes themselves to... Um, uh, dissolve and dispel all the patterns of degeneration and disease in the cells. It, it seems that uh, azestulite works on the light body of each cell as maybe slightly distinguished from uh, the light body of the whole self. Um, and I know that when I work with azestulite I often feel as though every cell is getting stimulated and kind of bathed in light. Uh, so that's, I guess I would say, if I'm making distinctions about the roles of these stones, uh, I'd make those kinds of distinctions. So, I didn't really make a plan for this video. I just brought these four stones to the table and I knew I wanted to share with you um, uh, something as much as I could about their energies and about the fact that they work together as the four cornerstones of spiritual alchemy in the alchemy of stones. And I wanted to, if possible, expose you to them even just through the video and maybe through my own enthusiasm and intensity about these things, uh, give you a taste of what they feel like. Um, you know, for those of us who are passionate about stones and recognize the stones as beings and want to develop further our relationship with these beings and their energies, um, the alchemy of stones is uh, what I think of as kind of the, the, the fullest paradigm for understanding it and, uh, and creating uh, with the soul of the world a, a dynamic relationship that takes us through this process. We don't really uh, see ahead of time where we're going or what it will be like. We proceed on the basis of our desire and our trust and our love for the soul of the world and our love for the stone beings. And be assured that the love we feel for them is reciprocated. The love in our hearts may be as much their love as it is ours. Um, so I could go on for a long time, as you can probably tell. Uh, I'll just say again, if this if what I've been talking about speaks to you and if you would like your own experience of these things, uh, consider coming to the Alchemy of Stones Intensive Workshop uh, in Burlington, Vermont, June 11th through the 14th of 2020 um, and become a part of this community of people. We make an incredible energy field when we all come together with this intention. The energy of intention is a very powerful thing in and of itself. And when people join in that way, uh, there's magic that happens that just doesn't happen as easily uh, when we're working on our own. Uh, but I would also say that, you know, if you can't come, uh, feel into which, if any of these stones, speaks to you. And, uh, you know, find one somewhere. Our, my own company, Heaven and Earth, heavenandearthjewelry.com, uh, offers all of these. Um, and uh, I do recommend them uh, probably, you know, as highly as I could recommend any stone for spiritual awakening and growth. So uh, I hope I see you in Vermont. Uh, and I hope this video has been interesting to you. Many thanks.